Hey there, savvy investors. Are you ready to dive into the world of wealth creation? Well, look no further, because we've got an exclusive video just for you. Understanding and dissecting a company's income statement is an essential cornerstone for any successful investor. If you're looking to thrive in the world of investments, this skill is a non-negotiable. In this informative presentation, we'll guide you through the art of comprehending and analyzing a company's income statement. This invaluable knowledge is a game changer, whether you're a novice in the investment arena or a seasoned pro. Drawing from our experience, we'll provide you with insights that will not only demystify the subject matter, but also empower you to apply it effectively to your own investment strategy. Without further ado, let's dive right into this video and equip you with the tools you need to excel in your investment journey. Before we dive into the intricacies of explanation and analysis, let's take a moment to grasp the fundamentals of what exactly an income statement is and why companies rely on them. An income statement is one of the trio of crucial financial documents used to report a company's financial performance over a specified time frame. These three critical statements include the balance sheet, the statement of cash flows, and the income statement. The income statement serves as a detailed breakdown of a company's financial activities during this time period. It encompasses several key components. One, revenue. This represents the money a company earns from selling its products and services. Two, expenses. Expenses cover various costs incurred in the course of business operations. These include expenses related to product manufacturing, employee salaries, rent for facilities, and other overhead expenses. Three, profit. Profit is the bottom line and represents the company's earnings after subtracting all the expenses from its total revenue. In simple terms, it can be thought of as sales minus all the costs associated with running the business. Understanding these elements of the income statement is crucial for anyone looking to make informed investment decisions. It provides a clear picture of a company's financial health and performance over a specific time frame. So, let's proceed with our exploration. Now that we've grasped the high-level theory behind income statements, let's bring it down to practical terms by using Apple and their income statement as a real-life example. It's worth noting that all publicly traded companies are mandated by the government to make their financial information readily available to the public online. Accessing a company's financial statements is a breeze. Simply execute a Google search with annual report and the name of the company whose information you're seeking. Let's take a moment to appreciate how easy it is to access this wealth of financial data, and then we'll dive into the specifics of dissecting Apple's income statement to gain insights into their financial performance. To access Apple's income statement as an example, follow these simple steps. Conduct a Google search using the query, Annual Report Apple. This search will direct you to Apple's investor relations website. Click on the link that leads to their most recent annual report. Within the annual report, you'll find Apple's income statement, often referred to as their 10K report. This method provides direct access to Apple's financial data and by extension, their income statement. By following these steps, you can easily explore the financial performance of this tech giant. Let's move forward and delve into the specifics of dissecting Apple's income statement to gain valuable insights. Let's break down and analyze Apple's income statement with a quick overview. When examining a company's income statement, keep a couple of key points in mind. In the case of Apple, you'll notice that the numbers are presented in millions of dollars. This is done to condense the income statement and make it easier to read. So, when you see a figure like 365, it actually represents $365 million in this context, not 365,000. It's essential to be aware that some companies' fiscal years don't align with the calendar year. In Apple's case, the fiscal year for 2021 ended in September 2021, not December 2021. This discrepancy is common among businesses, so always check the fiscal year dates to ensure accurate interpretation. Now that we've got these key points in mind, we're ready to dive deeper into the specifics of Apple's income statement and gain insights into their financial performance. Let's dive into the nitty-gritty details of the income statement, starting with the top line. 
company sales, revenue. At the very beginning of any income statement, you'll encounter the company sales section. This line is of paramount importance as it represents the total revenue generated by the company. Companies often provide further granularity by breaking down their sales into various segments or geographical regions. This breakdown helps provide a more comprehensive understanding of what constitutes their revenue streams. For instance, let's take a look at Tesla and Apple as examples. Tesla categorizes its revenue into distinct segments, including automotive sales, revenue derived from selling vehicles, automotive leasing, essentially income from renting vehicles to customers over extended periods, energy generation and storage, this pertains to their solar panel business, financial services and others. These categories may encompass various additional sources of revenue. Apple, on the other hand, divides its revenue into two primary categories, products. This includes sales of physical products like iPhones, iPads, AirPods, Apple Watches, and Macs. Services, revenue generated from software and subscription services, which might include App Store revenue, Apple Music, cloud storage fees, and any other income not related to physical products. This breakdown allows investors and analysts to gain insights into the composition of a company's revenue streams, making it easier to evaluate the company's overall performance and the relative importance of each revenue category. Understanding these nuances is crucial when assessing a company's financial health and growth prospects. Understanding why companies break down their revenue into these distinct categories is crucial for investors. It offers a more nuanced and detailed insight into a company's performance and strategic priorities. In the case of Apple, their decision to separate product revenue from services revenue is particularly insightful. It enables investors to track the company's progress in achieving its goals. For instance, Apple, under the leadership of CEO Tim Cook, has prioritized growing the services side of the business. By comparing the year-over-year -year growth of services revenue to that of product revenue, investors can easily gauge how well management is advancing toward this objective. If services revenue is growing faster, it indicates success in this strategic shift. Moving on to the broader perspective of combined revenue, as an investor, you typically want to see a company's revenue trending upward. This reflects overall growth and positive financial health. To evaluate a company effectively, it's also beneficial to compare its revenue growth rate with that of its competitors in the same industry. In the case of Apple, we can observe that their revenue increased by 5.5% in 2020 and by a substantial 33.3% in 2021. These figures provide valuable context for assessing Apple's performance and its competitive positioning within the industry. Now let's proceed down the income statement to explore further components that contribute to the overall financial picture. Cost of sales, often known as the cost of goods sold, COGS, represents the expenses linked to producing the products or services a company sells. Think of it this way. If you're General Motors crafting cars, your cost of sales includes the costs of tires, engines, vehicle frames, interiors, and everything else that goes into making those cars. Now apply the same concept to a tech giant like Apple. Their cost of sales encompasses all the expenditures associated with manufacturing iPhones, iPads, Macs, and their wide range of products and services. But here's where it gets fascinating, the magic metric known as gross margin. Here's the deal. Subtract the cost of goods from sales. You're left with gross profit. Divide that gross profit by sales. You've got the percentage known as gross margin. The higher the better. Now, why does this matter? Because a higher gross margin signifies a company's power to set higher prices while still making substantial profits. It's like wielding the wand of strong pricing power. Let me illustrate. Imagine Apple spends $500 to manufacture an iPhone. They sell it for $750, making a gross profit of $250. That's a formidable 33% gross margin calculated by dividing $250 by the $750 sale price. Now picture this, Apple offers the same iPhone for $1,000. Their gross profit soars to $500, calculated by subtracting the $500 cost of sales from the $1,000 sale price. 
And there you have it, a triumphant 50% gross margin. In essence, a high gross margin grants a company the ability to command higher prices. With this knowledge, let's continue our expedition through the income statement and unveil more financial insights. Now that we've grasped this concept, it's essential to highlight a crucial point, the disparity in gross margin between the product and service sides of the business. The gross margin in the services sector is nearly double that of the product sector. This stark contrast illustrates precisely why Apple's management made it a priority to nurture the growth of the services division. It also underscores why it's vital for Apple to distinguish services revenue from products revenue in their financial reporting. From an investor's perspective, the aspiration is generally to witness gross margins expanding over time. Apple provides a perfect example of this trend. In 2019, their gross margin stood at 37.8%. By 2020, it had improved to 38.2%. In 2021, it reached an impressive 41.8%. These figures showcase a continuous uptrend in gross margins, reflecting Apple's evolving pricing power and strategic focus on services, ultimately strengthening their financial performance. Understanding these nuances is a pivotal part of evaluating a company's financial health and its potential for sustainable growth. Let's dive deeper into the income statement and explore the fascinating world of operating expenses. These are the expenditures tied to the day-to-day -day operation of the business, in contrast to the cost of goods sold, which is more directly linked to producing products and services. For Apple, the primary categories of operating expenses include 1. Research and Development, R&D. As the name suggests, R&D expenses cover the costs associated with researching and developing new products and innovations. For instance, think about the not-so-secretive Apple Car project. All expenses tied to its development fall under R&D. Two, selling, general, and administrative expenses, SG&A. This category encompasses various costs related to running the business. It includes expenses like office rent, employee salaries, marketing, and essentially any other operational costs that aren't part of the cost of goods sold or R&D. Now here's the magic trick, analyzing R&D and SG&A expenses in relation to total revenue. By comparing these expenses to the company's total revenue, investors gain insights into the efficiency of the company's operations. This analysis can help identify whether a company is effectively managing its research and development costs and its general operational expenses in relation to its overall revenue. Understanding this relationship allows investors to assess the company's ability to control costs while still driving innovation and maintaining smooth day-to-day -day operations. It's a key aspect of evaluating a company's financial health and its capacity for sustainable growth. Expanding on this, as a company's sales grow, investors typically look to see if the company can manage its expenses effectively. Ideally, expenses should remain stable or increase at a slower rate than sales. Let's illustrate this concept with an example. Apple's SG&A expenses as a percentage of sales were 7% in 2019 and have decreased to 6% in 2021. Generally, seeing this percentage trend downwards over time is a positive sign. Moving on to operating profit, this figure represents a company's profit. Before accounting for taxes, and interest paid on debt. It's calculated by subtracting the total cost of sales and total operating expenses from revenue. An essential tool for analyzing a company's performance in this regard is the operating margin. This is simply the operating profit divided by revenue. Why does it matter? Because it reveals how much profit a company generates for each dollar of revenue. A higher operating margin is a positive indicator and seeing it trend upwards over time is even better. In Apple's case, we observed that the operating margin was 24% in 2019 and has risen to nearly 30% in 2021. This signifies the company's ability to convert a larger portion of its revenue into profit. Reflecting strong financial performance and operational efficiency, analyzing these metrics provides investors with valuable insights into a company's financial health and its ability to generate profit from its operations. It's a crucial aspect 
of assessing investment opportunities. Moving on to the next line item, other income and expenses. These encompass income and expenses that fall outside the realm of a company's normal day-to-day -day operations. For instance, if Apple made a successful investment in a tech startup, any income generated from that investment would typically be included in this category. Following that, we arrive at earnings before taxes, which is precisely what it sounds like the company's profit before accounting for taxes. Subtracting taxes from earnings before taxes yields the final figure known as net income. This is the number most people think of when discussing a company's profit. Now that we've built a foundation of understanding regarding the components of an income statement, it's crucial to also grasp how various growth and profitability related factors can influence a company's future financial results. By considering these factors, investors can better anticipate a company's trajectory and potential for sustained success. It's all part of the intricate tapestry of financial analysis. With this knowledge, you're better equipped to assess a company's financial health, make informed investment decisions, and navigate the dynamic world of business finance. Let's look at a basic financial model to project how different growth rates, gross margins, and operating expenses can impact Apple's profitability. This kind of modeling is an invaluable tool for investors and analysts to assess a company's potential and determine if a stock is undervalued. Let's walk through some hypothetical numbers to see how these projections work. One, assume Apple can grow its products business by 10% and its services business by 20% per year. Two, regarding gross margins, you anticipate that Apple can achieve higher margins by selling products at higher prices with gradual increases from 36% in 2022 to 38% in 2024 for products and from 70% to 72% over the same period for services. Three, estimate research and development, R&D, at a constant 6% of sales and decreasing selling, general and administrative expenses, SG&A, as a percentage of sales from 5.75% in 2022 to 5.25% in 2024. Four, for other income and expenses, set it to zero due to the uncertainty associated with this category. Five, assume a 15% tax rate. With these assumptions, we project that net income will grow by 14.2% in 2022, 18.3% in 2023, and 18.2% in 2024. This kind of analysis allows you to gauge the potential trajectory of a company's profitability based on various scenarios and assumptions. We will delve into discounted cash flow evaluations in a separate video, as it provides a deeper understanding of how these financial projections can be used to assess a stock's value. Keep up the fantastic work in your financial analysis journey. It's essential to emphasize that these are hypothetical numbers and not necessarily reflective of Apple's actual financial performance. However, this demonstration effectively illustrates how to approach projections and analysis on the income statement providing valuable insights into the world of financial modeling and forecasting. Thank you for sharing this insightful video with others, and I'm sure many viewers will find it valuable and educational. Keep on watching to learn more about the other financial statements.